We're here with John Robb. He's a world-renowned music journalist. Um, he's here at Liverpool Sound City for a conference, is that right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a very uh, posh introduction. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is the conference going to be about? What are you going to be talking about today? Well, the panel we're doing today, which I'm chairing, is about sex and drugs and rock and roll. And it's, okay. it's may, maybe trying to deconstruct the myth that, you know, do people have to take a lot of sex and drugs to do yeah. rock and roll? Yeah, well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But, um, <laughs> because I'm chairing the panel, I don't technically have an opinion, but <clears throat> so I'll be changing my opinion every two minutes to create a debate, really. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you're, um, you're well known for your writing about the Manchester music scene, um, Stone Roses, etc., Happy Mondays. Um, so, you know, how would you compare the Liverpool music scene to the Manchester one? And do you think it's better, worse? What do you think? I think they're both quite, they both have a similar amount of success in that. And they're both quite similar in a weird kind of way, but also at the same time quite different. I think uh, they're both. Uh, Kind of guitar, very guitar orientated, um, psychedelic. There's a lot of psychedelia in the music in Manchester. They're both quite druggy, actually, which kind of fit in this panel. <laughs> they both came out of punk in different directions, but they intertwine so many times that you can't take them apart, really. You look at a band like Oasis, but they had their fans in Liverpool before they had in Manchester. They used to do all their demos over here. They learned a lot about how to write songs over here. And Noel always said he felt almost more like a Liverpool group than Manchester group in some ways. I know, I know there's a big rivalry between the two cities, but I think, I think it's mainly with football. I think musically yeah. it never has been. The musicians mm -hmm. have always got on really well. And there's always been these connections, right from the punk days, right to yeah. now, really. They're only 30 miles apart. I think yeah. it's weird how people from Manchester Liverpool don't go to each other's cities. I think so. But I'm actually from Blackpool, so I'm, I'm in between. Right. So I like, I like both cities. So you're, you're quite yeah. neutral. I'm neutral because I love both cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been going to Liverpool for years, and I live in Manchester. So they're both two, two really ace cities. And I think if you stick the two cities together, you could take on any city in the world, you know, for, for the amount of talent to come out of them. And um, so you're a journalist, and how how have you worked your way up to where you are now? Is this for you, for tips? Well, <laughs> people watching as well. Um, well, I, I just hustle really. I started doing a fanzine. I, st I started in punk, I had a band because the thing about punk was DIY, do it yourself, and that's the most powerful thing that came out of punk. You didn't have to wait for anybody's permission to do anything, which right. is truer and easier now than it was then. Because then, if you wanted to write, you had to print your own fanzines. You had to learn about printing and yeah. out magazines. Now you can do a website or a blog. You can go to WordPress. It mm -hmm. takes about 20 seconds mm -hmm. to set that up. That's a good way to start. You start writing on WordPress. You learn how to write in your own style. I mean, nowadays, the worst thing about it, nowadays, everything's got so corporate that people are telling you how to write, but you're telling what bands to like. I think the best writers, people write from their own heart, you know, they write their own style. But that, that's getting chipped away quite a lot because everything's getting like, you have to write this and fit it into there and write in this kind of way. If you're going to make a living out of it, maybe you've got to do that. But luckily, I, I get to do what I want, so... My favourite writers are the ones who just write purely instinctively in their own style. So I started on fanzines and I started doing live reviews for a newspaper called Sounds, which went bust in 1992, I think. Then I went to Mary to Maker, then, then just freelance. I probably have to do what you do, you just have to ring people up and hustle. Yeah. It's about contacts as well, you've been around a long time, you know more people. There's, there's no magic to it at all, it's all about networking and getting to know people and stuff like that. And some people don't like what you do, some people do like what you do. You have to have a thick skin like a musician has as yeah. well. So, yeah. so would you say that basically just do your own thing, start your own blog, just do, do yeah. what you like doing and so hope start, Doing your own blog is a really good way to do it because you learn how to write, you know, to run, you can write, write to a deadline as well as important. You build up a backlog of stuff, you've got loads of stuff already there. If people want to see your stuff, you can just send them stuff off your blog. So I think, and WordPress is so easy to operate, you can get people to start reading it, maybe get a reputation of somebody who's really on the ball. It's good to go out a lot and also be totally versed in pop culture. There's no point writing about pop music or pop culture if you know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know about the whole lot. You just have to know about your little bit really well because it's yeah. so fractured now as well in music. But it's quite good to go and check out all the stuff as well. You know, if somebody's playing the arena, you don't particularly like what they are, and you could blag your way in. You must go and see the gig because you can you compare it to stuff that you like. It's kind of it's kind of good to know the context of your scene, isn't it, where it fits in the world. Yeah. Yeah, and read loads of stuff and be obsessed by it kind of helps as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you got any bands in mind at the moment who you think are up and coming, people should watch out for them? Well, we've got Record Label Manchester, we're putting out some stuff. There's a band called 1913 who were like uh, a poppy version of Joy Division, their singles oh, out in right, a couple of okay. weeks. They're great. Mm -hmm. We're putting out a Kid British single. Every, people know about them anyway because they were yeah. Mercury last year. Mm -hmm. They're great bands. We're going to let them sound like what they want to sound like. They should sound pretty raw, like this punky version of specials, and we'll let them sound like that, and they sound far better for that. There's, couple, there's a lot of good young bands coming out of Withenshaw near Manchester. Right. There's a... 
uh, oh, God, uh, Dirty Norse, one of them. They sound like Arctic Monkeys, but a reggae version. It's like Bob Marley crossed the Arctic Monkeys, and they're amazing. Every, they demo 25 songs on it, and every tune is fucking amazing. Yeah. And they're really good mates, the band called Fraser King, who are a nice uh, band as well. Completely I know Fraser band. King. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. got contacts. <laughs> yeah, they're a top band. You, you can't place them at all. They don't sound like anything else in the world, do they? Uh, they're interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nathan's a bit of a character. He is, he is, yeah. yeah. And they sound a bit like doo wop, and they sound like a bit of indie. They sound a bit it's funky. totally different, you know, like oh, really original. They're clever. A new sound, yeah. They're very smart. They're a mm-hmm. bit crazy. And the maddest thing yeah. is the drummer. I know his mum and dad because they grew oh. up with me in Blackpool. Okay. <laughs> that's when you. That's when you know you're getting old. <laughs> it's when you know people. And his mum and dad are younger than me. It's when I can remember them. Like I was friends with them, you know. Yeah. I was going. He told me them. I was. God, I thought. I saw. I thought. God, you look really like your mum. Yeah, that's bizarre. Mm-hmm. But he's a good lad as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're a good band. Mm-hmm. There's a whole scene of these bands in Wilshire. But Manchester's full of good bands. It always mm-hmm. is. There's so many venues, about 20 venues now. There's so yeah. much space to create. Good and, stuff. and like, do you do you think it's good that the Sound City Festival is? It's it, you know, it's a good thing that all the different um, locations, different venues are coming together to make one big festival. Yeah, I think it's great to have Sound City. I, like, I think it's good to have every, every city should have a uh, festival like these things on. Yeah. I like it when the cheaper and the bands get into them. I think in the city of Manchester maybe got too expensive in the end. Mm-hmm. I like it when the more grassroots, unconventional Manchester is good for that. It's cheaper to get to. It's, I like it when the bands can mix the people running the music business because it can actually give them CDs or, or, or you know links to the MySpace, blah, blah. Because that's where it should work, isn't it? Because the most interesting thing is what this 16-year-old kid's got in his pocket and the music, isn't it? You know, that's, that's, where, that's where it's going, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, all his panels are fun and they're good to do, aren't they? But really, what's powering it all along was the people in the mouldy rehearsal rooms, isn't it? <laughs> you know, coming up that little twist of genius. I think it's good, it's good it being Liverpool. Liverpool looks great now. It's good coming over here for a couple of days and stuff. And it's going to be ace tonight running around checking all the bands out as well. And hopefully in the city we'll get, it, get itself together and it'll be good as well in the autumn. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure you're uh, excited and eager to go out and speak to everyone now. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you very much okay, for speaking so to us. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Yeah.